Yeah. So Phaedra and Dave, I think met, met at Cabrillo and are married. Yeah, there's Dave's hand in the back. And she is um, a civil engineer who went to Cal Poly, but her specialty is geotechnical and structural. So a little bit different from Dave's. And so Dave was telling us, you know, about the work he's doing. Maybe you could start telling us about how you got to where you are now and, um, you know, like what you're working on, what kind of work you do. That would be great. Thank you, Priti. Uh, oh, wait, Dave has to mute. He is muted, but there's still an echo. I don't know. Oh. Okay, it's gone. Hold on. I think you got muted again. Okay, technical difficulties. Now we're here. We're good. Okay, um, I just need to figure out how to share my screen. The little green arrow at the bottom. Oh, I see. Okay, I don't use Zoom. We use uh, we use uh, Microsoft Teams. So we're oh. every, everyone's using different uh, different programs now. So I might I actually may know a few of you. Uh, and I actually taught at Cabrillo in 2017 and 2019 um, the surveying class. So I might recognize some names up there. I can't, I don't see everyone's name, but I, I if you know me, say hello. <laughs> Hi. Um, uh, so uh, let me share my screen. And Phaedra, you're working on a tunneling project, right? Oh yeah. I just told them about the channel uh, tunneling project before uh, we started into these speakers. Yeah, that's a that's a really awesome job. And one of the things that always makes me crack up about that job is um, uh, the there was that one movie, um, Ocean's Eleven, I think. Uh -huh. They had yeah. uh, maybe it was the Twelve, where they there was a scene where John Cheadle was uh, drilling with the, the channel machine, and um, that's not true because the channel was actually drilled um, into the ground, and then they drove it off path, and then they just left it there. Um, sometimes in tunneling, it's cheaper to leave the machine in the ground than it is to remove it. So there's no way that they would have had that machine in that uh, that movie. So, you know, just some... Oh, wow. That's a great fact. Thank you. It's, it's a hard thing when you're starting to watch movies and you see, like, little facts. Oh, yeah. That's not true. Um, but it is a really interesting. And also, if you watch that movie, make sure you see how much room and space he has in that machine. You never have that much room or space. Um, think about like uh, underground uh, crawl space, um, you know, and this, but like like you're kind of roughing through the crawl space. That's pretty much what it seems like in at least small tunnel boring machines. So, um, but yeah. So I well, I'll just go start out where I you know where I went to school and um, yeah. you know, where I'm at now. So I started at Cabrillo, just similar to Dave, uh, and studied civil engineering, um, and then trans uh, uh, transferred down to Cal Poly myself. I spent about two and a half years at Cal Poly, and I had my 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 focus was a little bit undetermined, um, but I knew I liked dirt, <laughs> and I knew I liked uh, doing something a little different, like a little weird and kind of off the beaten path. Um, I thought for a while maybe I'll be an underwater uh, sea, um, like a sea inspector for, for welding. And I had all these ideas. But then um, when I was at Cal Poly, one of my uh, professors asked me what I was going to be doing after school. And I said, I don't know. And he said, I know a guy. And so he, I was literally in the room uh, in, his, in his office and he just called me, called uh, my, old, my old boss now, um, and said, I know someone who would be really good. Um, uh, she, you, you work in tunnels. She wants to do something unique and something different. Uh, so do you have a space for her? And he said, yeah, send her on over. So um, I, I drove up to Seattle and got the job and pretty much on the spot. And it was a real blessing because that's really, I would say, how I got into tunnels. Um, and tunnels are unique and they're very specific. So there's not a lot of schools that you can study under tunneling, um, at least in the US. Uh, there's two or maybe three in the US that I know of that have more mining degrees, uh, Colorado School of the Mines, Virginia Tech, and University of Arizona. And uh, those are all three really good schools um, to study tunnels and mining. Um, but the, and mo most of the other schools are international. I mean, there's a lot in Norway and Switzerland and Italy. They're some of the best tunneling programs in, uh, in Europe, for sure. 
So um, did you learn tunneling just on the job or did totally. you go to school? Really? Wow. 100%. Um, I knew close to nothing uh, about tunnels. And so um, it's one of those industries that you just get joined up with a couple people and you learn as much as you can by watching other people do build uh, build and, and, and just glean whatever information that, that are come before you. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of a strange industry in that way because that means anybody can really get into involved in it. Um, and I just want to show you the reason why anyone can get involved in it in terms of engineering is because it, it, it's, it has so many different facets to it. It has civil engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, water resources, transportation. There's so many different types of tunnels out there that involve all these different, um, all these different uh, engineering sets. And so like, for instance, like road tunnels, I'm sure we've all driven through road tunnel before. Um, train tunnels, uh, you know, they're, they're still making train tunnels and still retrofitting train tunnels, especially on the East Coast for double stack trains. Uh, sewer tunnels, something we, the general public doesn't even think about, uh, which actually is part of the reason why I like it so much. It's kind of gives you this, like, this almost like a secret, like this okay. inner workings of how, uh, how the world works around you and nobody no one else knows or no one else thinks about. And so it's just, and, and you need it in order for the society to really um, have clean net, clean water and water resources, like clean drinking water tunnels. Um, one of the sewer tunnels I'm working on in DC is uh, to clean the Potomac River. And the Potomac River is one of the most dirty rivers in the United States. Um, it's, it, it's a, actually it used to be a swamp and it was all along uh, the tanneries. We we're all along, along the river there um, in the 1700s and 1800s. And all the way through, I think, 98, uh, it was one of the most dirty rivers in the US. And it uh, was required by the EPA to clean it up. And they were on a consent decree, which means you have to clean it up within a certain period of time. Um, and now we're at 2020 and people are now swimming in the Potomac River because you are, it, it, it's cleaned up so much. Um, and so it, in an environmental view, like there are so many different ways that tunnels can be incorporated into cleaning our environment too. Um, one of the things that we don't, people kind of don't know about cleaning the environment is like hydroelectric tunnels. There are like a lot of controversy with like yeah, it's green energy, but is it like good for the for resources, natural resources? So, um, you know, I do struggle uh, with some of those topics and I try to look at projects uh, more uh, like objectively, um, just to make sure that it does fit within what, what I think and then also like what is best for the society. Um, electric line tunnels, those are pretty like subways. Um, those are all over San Francisco. They're all over the, all over the world. Um, there's a new, there's new, there's new subways going up everywhere. China, Japan, I mean, some of the best in the world are in, are in Japan. Um, just fantastic tunnels. Uh, wineries have great, great tunnels over up, especially in Napa. If you get a chance to go visit one, I recommend it highly. Um, you can control your environment. Uh, it's like this perfect, perfect setting. You know, it's kind of humid, but kind of, but still moist and, and damp. And so you always feel... You never feel like super like hot in a tunnel. You always it's like the, always the perfect temperature, so that's uh, something that's always kind of fun to to know. Uh, mines, if people are interested in mining, uh, caves, pedestrian tunnels, and culverts. There's so many different, and you know there's there's probably a tunnel going under us right now, and we had no idea. So the machinery and uh, uh, technology has gotten so good that there's so much that we would never know in a lot of ways. Um, there's just some in some projects, I think it was in LA where they were trying to put subways in and then the ground was sinking and stuff. Like, it doesn't always go so smoothly, right? No, it doesn't. Um, are you talking about the purple in LA Metro? The purple? Yeah, one? yeah. Yeah. So LA has another, um, the big thing about tunnels is it's solely dependent on the soils, mm -hmm. right? How you're excavating and the soils that you're in. And so, um, for instance, like this photo on the bottom right, you see these like really large water cap. It's a really large water cavern, um, and this is in Chile, and it's uh, and that's rock. So like rock is really sound and really stout, and so like the big buildings that are above it can withstand some of that um, stress because 
there, the ground's not moving underneath you. But where, if you look on the top right, see that's a cut and cover where they had to put it, um, had to put the box culvert in and open it up because it's one, it's pretty shallow, but also it's really soft ground. And so anything, if you tried to tunnel under that, it would, whatever would be above it would fall in. And soft ground is the worst. So soft ground and water is the worst for tunnels. It just is horrible. And LA has a problem with the tar pits, oh. um, the, tar, the tar sands. And I'm actually working on the LA uh, Purple Line project. And uh, you can see, um, I wish I had a photo of it, but you can't take a camera down there because um, it uh, has so much sulfur in it because of the tar sands that it could explode. So interesting. Wow, yeah. interesting. But, um, you can see tar oozing out of the supports. Um, it's phenomenal. And actually, I don't, I don't know very many people who've been, had the chance to work on a project like that before. It's kind of a very unique, very interesting area. They even found a saber-toothed tiger in one of the um, excavations for a station at Koreatown. Very cool. So look for that and next time you go to LA and you're going to take the purple line. Uh, it won't be done for another two, a year or so, but uh, that is, it, they'll, they're going to put it on display. So it's and, right uh, for the carpets. Someone asked about the catacombs under Paris. Uh, <laughs> how does that tunneling is like that, factor into that, into maintenance yeah, that, of that? So I've been there and uh, so Paris actually has some of the best tunnels in the world. Paris was the first uh, uh, modern sewer. And, uh, you know, don't just stop at the catacombs when you go to Paris, go to the sewer museum. And it is a live sewer that you can go walk in the tunnels and go to. And it is phenomenal because it was one of the first of, our, of, the, of the kind of, of at least uh, human technology uh, of our history. And so the catacombs kind of fits in that as well, where you should go and just observe like, this is pretty spectacular. Um, the catacombs are a bit deeper than the sewers, but it's it's pretty it's pretty unique. Okay, cool. Thank you. I mean, you. you have to like to have you have to be. You, it's hard to be claustrophobic and be in tunnels. Um, right. So that's one thing that is always uh, that, that always people I talk about. And also, I have a I have a poll. Um, is it during an earthquake? What do you guys think? Is it best to be in a tunnel or out a tunnel during an earthquake? You guys why, do don't, why don't send everyone uh, type into the chat? They usually type into the chat. Okay, uh, and then so think about it. Um, say if you're in this tunnel on the left, uh, which is uh, met, uh, a, sub, uh, um, a driving tunnel and then a subway through it. This is uh, uh, just, and then we'll, we'll, we'll try to see at the end what people think. Okay, I typed it into the chat. Okay. Um, so for everyone to respond, I don't, I don't have the poll function here. I don't know why. We'll move on and then I'll see, we'll see what people say. Yeah. So there's some, so just to kind of give you an idea, some tunnels are really huge. Um, this is actually a picture of me on the bottom in a rock tunnel that we were blasting. Um, and some tunnels are really small. Some of them have, uh, most of them, almost all of them have concrete support. So this right here on the top right is a shot, uh, shotcrete machine. Um, Dave showed you a picture of, of someone standing there holding the shotcrete, which um, is impressive and they're, they're very good contractors. Um, this is a robot. Um, and so if you're really good at video games, this is actually, they literally have a video game uh, console and use it to spray. Um, so if you, know, you studied gaming through school, which means you did the gaming, but not the schoolwork, do you have a job running this potentially? Actually, yeah. Really? I, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, one of the guys that actually ran this was, um, he was, has blind in one eye, um, but he, he was like a phenomenal shot creep uh, operator. And so we were, um, and he was really good at video games. And so this is what he did. And wow, you know, it's, uh, imp it's impressive. There is, there is a lot of really good work. Um, a lot of good, un actually unions are pretty good in the tunneling industry. Um, the one on the top right is, uh, those are tunnel segments and those get, um, I'll, I'll talk about this uh, briefly, but this, this concept is more done for a tunnel boring machine. Um, so the bottom right is drill and blast, so using explosives, and the top right or top left is uh, um, a tunnel boring machine. And then there's some liners on the bottom. Uh, we've got fiberglass liners. This is more for like materials engineers. Um, mechanical engineers for steel and flange, uh, like flange designs, 
it's a it's pretty impressive. So um, just a couple. I'm just going three going over three quick ways of doing uh, excavating. You know, in the, a hole in the ground. <laughs> one of them is blasting, and it's one of my favorites because it's so unique and different and uh, you don't you don't get to you know hold dynamite very many times in your life, um, and it's uh, it's safe. You have to it's a, it has a, you have to make sure you're safe and doing it safely. <laughs> so these are. I think, the, I think the question um, students might have here is, do you get to do this hands on yourself? So um, I have many a times, um, especially early in my career. Um, so I've been doing this for over, about 15 years now, um, and so early in my career, I was. Uh, I was allowed to fill the holes um, and actually set off a charge, multiple charges. And um, I think engineers aren't as, uh, it depends on who you work for. So like if you work for a contractor as an engineer, you would be able to design and fill the holes and actually do, set off charges. But as an engineering for the owner, um, I you really wouldn't be allowed to do that. But I knew someone who was working here and so they let me do it <laughs> so, and there's so really cool. nothing like setting off a charge um, there really isn't um, I have a couple of uh, videos um, that I wanted to show uh, and I mean it's just such a it's, it's pretty exhilarating and just how many of you this is just like a trim shot um, Were you there? Yeah, but and so it actually just it, it doesn't seem like a lot, right? That seems like a that's just a trim shot, real small. But then um, the reason why it goes off at different times is because blasting you want to um, you want you want to give a free face to the blast. So this is actually not in a tunnel, but we did a lot of blasting. So uh, this is a, a bridge pier along a railroad track, and there was actually a tunnel further down, and we couldn't interrupt the train service. And so when we had to get rid of this bridge pier, we had to it had to fall on the opposite side of the tracks. So you design the blast in order for the slow motion in order to to have the bridge pier fall in the opposite direction of the tracks. It's wow. hard to get videos of blasting in a tunnel because you're really not supposed to be close to it. Um, but in this scenario, it's much easier to get blasting uh, videos when you're outside. That is so cool. It is pretty fun. <laughs> I, I, I'm not gonna lie, it's really, it's really a blast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the other one is um, a road header. So, you know that movie, like, Total Recall? This is, like, very, yeah, Total Recall-ish, very futuristic, um, but it's very effective. Uh, some of the issues with this is you can only do it in certain ground types. Um, it can be very messy, really dusty, and so a lot of them tend to put, like, a water spigot on the, on the edge in order to, like, spray down whatever you're excavating. But usually this is good in, like, soft rock conditions. Um, this is also really common in winery wineries uh, wineries because the machines are a lot cheaper um, than a tunnel pouring machine and a lot of places won't let you blast in the city limits so um, even though blasting can be controlled so using something like this would be uh, would be would be good I have a video of it um, does one take longer than the other I mean this looks like it's small so it take a long time yeah well it it, 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 it does take a little bit longer, but not very, I mean, it depends on the ground entirely, and then um, how fast you are at, at putting up ground support behind it. So it's pretty, uh, pretty dirty and loud, pretty messy. I mean, you have to be able to um, withstand some of that, <laughs> but, uh, and so it's not always the best uh, way of, of of excavating, but this is kind of the, the the cream of the yeah. crop. This is kind of one of the the most common thing that you'll see on the news, at least, um, especially now with um, companies like the Boring Company who have a lot of marketing te like techniques. You'll see this. Um, they're tunnel boring machines. Um, this is where mechanical engineering and electrical engineering is really uh, really great and definitely um, incorporates a lot of different types of engineering. Um, this, uh, one of the companies that I'll put in the chat um, is a company called Heron Connect. It's a German company. Um, 
there's about three different tunnel boring machine ger uh, companies in Germany, one in France, um, two in China, one in J two in Japan, and then um, one in the United States. Um, and there might be a couple more sprinkled around, but um, those are like the main ones. Um, Heron Connect, I think, has the best videos on their website. Um, and uh, basically what it does is the, it almost acts like a worm, I guess you could mm -hmm. say, with a, with, a, with a spindle on a head. And so the head rotates and there's these disc cutters on the end of the head and they score the ground in front of it. And as they score the ground, the ground falls to the bottom and then it's br brought up through a screw conveyor, um, uh, a kind of like a Da Vinci, didn't Da Vinci uh, design the screw, a screw conveyor. And, um, and, at, and as, uh, and you'll kind of see like, as, and as it's moving, there's uh, these segments, concrete segments that you can see on the right um, that get installed by a conveyor belt, uh, or sorry, get installed by a crane and set into place like puzzle pieces. So that's why it kind of looks like puzzle pieces. They're actually um, parallelograms um, and that, that's how they like fit together. And, and so water doesn't come through, they put gaskets around them and then they connect them with rods. And then as, um, in order for the machine to move um, forward, it actually uses hydraulic rams to push against the last concrete uh, segment that was installed. Um, these are really common in subways. When you're going, when you're riding in a subway, look at, try to look out the window, and if there's lights, you can see the set. You can see these lines where the segments are, um, and then water tunnels uh, tend to use these as well. So does the whole thing come back out? Is that the idea, or does so it go all the way through, or what? It goes all the way through. You can't, um, ba you can't back up a TBM. So, okay. Yeah, uh, you can like five feet, but that's about it. So. Um, I'm going to show you, uh, I'll send a video on how it works. There's a, Heron Connect has like a seven minute video of how it works. And oh, it's, that'd be great. I'll post that. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. It's really okay. fascinating and you'll learn a ton and you'll get, you'll get excited and want to work on those projects. What and do you do really if you hit a snag? What's that? What do you do if you hit a snag, uh, you know, like some iron ore and you just can't get past it? Are you talking about Big Bertha, the tunnel in Seattle? Um, Maybe. Yeah, I think I you know. are. Uh, so Seattle had um, one of the largest tunnel boring machines in the United States at the time. Um, it was a 52, I think 54 foot TBM and it replaced one of the bridges that was there, the viaduct. Um, they hit, they said they hit a, a rod, a steel rod in the ground. It actually, they did hit a steel rod in the ground, but that was not what stopped the machine. It was, the what stopped the machine was um, actually a bad motor. Um, but there was a steel rod that they hit. So what you do is, in order for the ground to not cave in on you, on the front, you need to pressurize the face. The same pressure, the same uh, amount of water head and soil head that's on the front of this machine right here. Um, let me see how I do that. Um, I don't know how to... I was going to draw. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Okay. So the 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 wa there's ah there's water here putting against this against the head here, and there's soil putting pressure against the head, and it all wants to come through. In order to withstand that pressure, the machine has to actually apply the same pressure to the face, and so that actually has to be introduced by um, by putting adding pressure to to the face here. And if you want to, you can actually if you have something in front of you. You can actually um, keep applying pressure. Uh, one of the workers can get into a hyperbolic chamber, which hyperbolic chambers tend to be like right here. They're really tiny. And um, you go in there and you sit there and get pressurized. And then you can crawl through the face and cut it out. Um, there are other things that you can do um, if you're in solid ground. You can just see if you can open the face and have no material come in and then go in and cut it out. I mean, there are some amazing people who work in this industry who get themselves into pretty tight situations. Um, and it's, it's tough and, and it's a lot of money if you hit something. And so a lot of work goes into designing your alignments, designing your, um, your, uh, your shafts, everything goes into um, into making sure that you don't hit anything or you hit good ground and you don't have to improve the ground as you move forward. So the, all the work that gets done ahead of time, which is millions and millions of out, dollars, is like to try to, to not hit anything and to not cause issues. So it's a very good question though. What do you mean when you say get pressurized? So like it actually- getting pressurized. 
Um, it's, it's still like diving. Like, have you been like scuba diving? Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Yeah. And you like, no, and yeah. when you, yeah, when you go down, you kind of slowly go down and mm -hmm. constantly like pull, like push out your ears. Well, like you can do that in a, in a, in a vessel. Yeah. But in order, and, and then when you come out of the pressure, you have to de, um, you have to uh, depressurize as well. It's mm -hmm. a very expensive thing to do. It's incredibly expensive. So people try not to do it. And if you, do, you don't want to do it because it's pricey. Mm. So there, there's, I mean, this machine is highly complex. Uh, it's a, a one, um, they're wonderful. I mean, the, like I said, the one in, um, uh, Seattle was 52 uh, foot in diameter. I think the largest one in the world right now is, uh, Switzerland. I think they went 55. Um, there's always a race who can get the biggest machine. Um, and so the, they're, I mean, these are huge. These are like five, six store buildings tall. Are they, are they one-time use or no? Um, so no, they can actually be retrofitted. Um, and they oh. tend to be cheaper if you get retrofitted. However, no one wants to buy a retrofitted machine for a 50 foot diameter tunnel. Um, if you're going to spend the money, I mean, this, these machines, I think the machine over in Redwood City, um, which is only 16 foot diameter, that's, uh, it was over $17 million. Oh. So one machine. And so that was actually, uh, that was brand new. Um, and then they're going to, they are going to put, bring it back to the company to get retrofitted and it will be probably used again for another tunnel. Do you foresee any of this getting cheaper or will it always be like this? That's a really good question. Um, so I think it's the most expensive in the United States, uh, mostly because of litigation. Um, the, I mean, we're, we kind of are a litigious society um, and, and tunnels are, are no exception. Um, I think there's a lot of risk that gets involved. And so a lot of the, the cost is actually built into risk. And so, yes, there are material costs. Yes, there's labor costs. And all that is, all that is going to be included in, in your bids. But um, a, a number, the, 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 the multiplier that tends to make tunnels in the Uni United States so high is the risk. Um, and risk for, uh, and right now it's actually risk with COVID because um, people are working in close proximity to one another. And we've actually had some pretty horrible, um, you know, uh, COVID issues on our sites. Um, especially in LA. Uh, so, and then also um, uh, working in these tight spaces, uh, the, the city's uh, structures up above you. I mean, there's a lot of risks. Um, and then, you know, you always get the lawsuit. There's always a lawsuit um, with someone saying that their doors don't close anymore. Um, I mean, and a lot of times, uh, you know, we're not even tunneling near their house. And so it's like there's communities like hear about things and, you know, it, it's very litigious. Is, and so that's what makes our, this industry so expensive. Wow. I don't think it's going to get much cheaper. Um, there are new technologies that are coming out that will help, but I just, I'm not, I, I don't, at this point, I think things are going to just be more expensive. Right. Um, so I'm just going to go through, I don't have a lot of time left. Oh, I don't have any time left. Um, can I go through just one quick project? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, um, I just wanted to talk about, um, this industry, like I said, is really diverse, um, for like what kind of engineering you want to go into. But, um, what makes it really fun is there's never a tunnel where you live very rarely. So you do have to travel. Um, and one of my coworkers who's just gotten into the tunneling industry about two years ago, he was really confused by this because he's like, I don't understand. Like, I'm, I'm moving here. I'm moving there. And I was like, well, we go where the tunnel project is. The tunnel project never comes to us. And so if you are interested in travel, if you're interested in seeing new places, like, this might be an industry that you'd be interested in because there's always a project in the middle of nowhere um, that has a need for a tunnel. And although the Kanahe in Oahu is not in the middle of nowhere. It's in this like really amazing place in, in Hawaii. And I got to spend um, quite a bit of time there um, and doing the, both the design and the construction. So this is a water sewer tunnel um, that used a tunnel boring machine. And uh, it was done in rock and soil, mostly basalt. And it had this really beautiful like bluish green basalt and then coral in deposits. So you could see like coral layers. It's, geologically it's fantastic um wow. length about four miles it's a pretty small tunnel at 15 foot it doesn't seem that small but it actually is when you get into those spaces it's very small it was round um over 800 feet of rock above you and it had three shafts so when i was talking about design 
like, you know, Dave was talking about just like that, uh, that planning. There's so much planning that goes involved in this. There's drilling, there's rock cores that you're going to get. When you just drive around, um, you're going to look at like the, 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 the hillsides and the, the rock faces. And you can get so much information just by driving by and seeing a cut slope. Um, because you'll see the joint patterns of where you're going to see from the surface are going to be the same joint patterns down below. Um, so this is the tunnel alignment that we had. Um, we had two sh one shaft on the north side and one shaft on the or west side, one shaft on the east side. It's between Kaneohe and Kailua and it was a big mountain range in between them. The, so we use, uh, there's the profile there. So if that's a plan view, so it, like bird's eye view, um, looking down the tunnel alignment, this is a cross section through that. Um, and so you can see uh, the two different shafts. One is on the right hand side and one's on the left hand side. These were used by um, like slurry wall concrete construction. Uh, it's a pretty standard uh, way of uh, building these out of concrete and reinforcement. And that's the slurry wall machine there. Um, that's um, as me when we start excavating the t tunnel boring machine. The, the machine is on the left hand side, and then it left like on the right hand side. You can see it like leaves this like really glistening rock. Um, there's like a really heavily heavy horizontal joint right in there. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know I was talking about the the thrust the rams that that touch the back of the the concrete segments. Well, this is a different type of machine. This is a main beam machine in rock where it doesn't have segments at all, so it just leaves rock exposed. And so instead of rams that kind of move the back, it actually has like little feet that push against the side of the rock and then move it forward. So it's like push and move forward. So it was a, it was, um, a pretty neat tunnel. Um, and I got to go to this great, um, this great place and spend a lot of time. Um, you do work long hours. I would say like 14 hours a day. <laughs> um, you make a lot of money very quickly, uh, but you don't have like a, like during these jobs, it's hard. You don't have like a lot going on. You, you pretty much are on the job almost all the time. You do get breaks afterwards, of course. And then whenever you do get a break, I mean, you go out and try to explore as much as possible. Someone um, asked if you ever get sick because you're down below, get sick in the tunnel. Um, I've gotten sick. Uh, and w uh, never drink water that comes out of rock in a tunnel. Just... <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, that was the sickest I think I've, I've ever been on a job site. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a, a horrible thing. Um, so that was a mistake. So yes, I have gotten sick. Um, and yeah, you know, uh, if you're sick, um, you, you try to get into work if you can, but if you can, if you, you don't, you don't want to make others sick around you. And so you really try to be cognizant of that and you are working in tight spaces. Um, you know, I've worked all over the U.S. at this point, um, worked in Alaska, worked in Hawaii, worked, I'm working in D.C. right now, working in Alexandria, um, uh, oh, Seattle, Washington. I used to work on the railroad lines, so I used to work all along the railroad tracks and railroad tunnels. So it's a very, like, tra travel-friendly um, profession. Um, um, I don't know yeah, we kind of have to go, but yeah. you were going to tell us because there were a lot of guesses on the earthquake and tunnels oh, yeah. issue. And I think majority of people said inside or actually okay. I only have four or five. Yeah, five, six people say inside. One person says outside and one person qualifies inside as being depending on what tunnel. <laughs> I would say the last one's probably the best answer because, but it's actually safer to be inside a tunnel during an earthquake. So when someone tells you when you're riding BART, oh, I would hate to be on an earthquake in BART, they're wrong. You want to be in you want to be in a tunnel in earthquake because it's round, and when it's round, it actually moves with the whole ground. So you actually may not even know that you're in an uh, earthquake. There's nothing that can fall on you inside of a tunnel. And more than likely, you will actually not even know. So uh, that, that in, unless one, these square uh, culverts, that might be a little bit different, but mm -hmm. in the round tunnels, um, that is the best place to be. Mostly because you don't have any, um, it, it, this is all in thrust. It's almost like the top of a doorway, right. like all the way around. So, uh, and it's just, it's very structurally sound. Um, and so this is the, this is the best place to be. 
And I, if you guys have any questions or anything, um, I know we're running late, but I can put my contact information and, you know, my LinkedIn. I, in terms of that LinkedIn question, I highly recommend uh, doing a, getting a LinkedIn, after you, especially after you get out of school. Cool. Thank you so much, Phaedra. This was great. Yeah. Thank you to Dave, too. It was great to have both of you on and to find you both not traveling right now. So <laughs> um, I'll see you in a couple weeks. So yeah. let's thank them both. And um, uh, yeah, um, this was really great hearing about all of this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. here. I'm just going to put in the comments in the chat. Um, uh, in the chat of the, the different um, websites. And then that'd also, be great. Um, and I can even just send you an email to you, but. Oh, that's fine. And I think you were going to give me a link to a um, video that I could post to. Yeah. Herring, Herring or Herrick. Um, yeah, it was the name. Uh, Herring Connect. <laughs> Herring Connect. Okay. And while she's doing that, um, I know you guys, we've been going strong for two hours and 23 minutes and it's without a break. So um, 